Mmm, yummy, fresh food and lots of it. Selecting a refrigerator is a personal choice based on your personal needs. So I'm going to show you what I have. It doesn't mean this will be right for you. Maybe all wrong. But I'll just show you what I've done. And uh, you can factor in maybe some points that I've learned. Take the good, throw away the bad. The ice chest just worked great. I uh, never had any problems with it. I had a drawer put in so I could put an ice chest on this drawer, slide it in and out. And it, uh, it worked fine for a couple of years. And uh, I was working then. I was primarily doing uh, weekend camping, maybe a week-long trip with some block ice. And I would get uh, three, four days out of ice, and it just worked great. Uh, no complaints. But I got tired of getting ice, and I started calculating the cost of ice, and it was surprising. I mean, add up all the ice you use to pre-chill the refrigerator, and then what you use when you're actually out camping, uh, and that starts to accumulate. You know, that money is literally going down the drain. And I wanted something where I could stay off grid for a while. And uh, so I ended up, I did a lot of research, and I came up with this Dometic CFX 35. Now, this is good for me. I'm not saying it's good for you, but I'm just using it as an example. It is uh, one cubic foot of uh, refrigeration ecstasy. Uh, not a problem. I can keep a week's worth of food in there for myself, maybe with two people. Uh, you know, careful packing, careful planning, removing the packaging, you can fit a lot of food in there. <coughs> it runs on 12 volt and it runs on AC. My calculations after a year or two of use show it, uh, it drains about 2 amps an hour once it's at cool temperature. So you need to match your battery system with that. I have a 115 amp hour battery. Uh, I wish I had a bigger battery, but I can't fit one in this trailer. That will run this refrigerator for about 30 hours. Great boondocking refrigerator. Uh, so, I match my solar panels with it because I only get 30 hours. I really only need to get through the night. <coughs> then the solar panels start generating power. These are two 5 amp solar panels, 100 watts each. So I can put out 200 watts. And on a sunny day, I can have my battery charged in a couple of hours, and the rest is gravy for charging other things. So for a boondocking refrigerator, this thing is great. Uh, it has, I put in this reflexive to help with chilling. It has an area up here which is not super cold, but you can put eggs, cheese, butter, all those kinds of things, whatever you want. And then there's the colder area. And I use a little fan down here to keep the temperature very even in the refrigerator. Um, so a lot of the space is taken up by bread. So on this trip, I experimented with crackers, wasa brode in particular, one of my favorites. It's, uh, it's like tree bark, uh, the crackers, you know, whole grain tree bark. And uh, I use those. <coughs> they don't spoil. I can pack them in here. You can put them in a lifeboat. They don't spoil. Uh, and that would free up all this space. So depending on the duration of the trip, here I have easy access to stores. I can get uh, bread and other supplies very easily. But when boondocking, uh, like the summer, 19 days on the road, boondocking, out in Canada and other wild parts, there wasn't that much food available. So I could stock up in towns, switch over to Wasa Road, and free up a lot of cubic inches in this refrigerator for other foods. And it's really a pleasure to have fresh food on these uh, trips. So some of the things you want to look for is the size of your battery, the amount of amps that the uh, refrigerator actually draws, and what your solar generation or generator needs are, you know, what you can produce in the way of power uh, to keep everything running. Uh, this particular refrigerator runs on 12 volt and AC. So, uh, you know, I can uh, use it, plug it in. If I'm in a campground and I have AC, I plug in the trailer. It electrifies the trailer and I can plug this into the trailer and I'll get AC power. I'm on DC right now. Uh, one benefit that I really like about this refrigerator as opposed to a built-in one is that it's movable. I can take it out, I can use it for other purposes. I can, if I'm going shopping, like you know, if I'm up in Utah at Zion and I want to go to St. George and buy some ice cream, I can take this out, stick it in the car, 
and uh, drive a couple of hours to, uh, to get that vanilla ice cream, set this for freeze and bring that ice cream back. Important things like that, you know? So uh, I can put it in the car, I can put it in the home, I can run it uh, on grid or off grid. So that's a pretty nice boondocking refrigerator for me. Your needs may be different. You may need a much larger one. Larger refrigerators, you know, which of course use more energy, some of them have two zones. They can be a freezer on one side and a cooler on the other. This is one zone. It's either freeze or refrigerate. You set the temperature and it will keep it there. Uh, I set this for 32 degrees or 33 and it oscillates between 33 and 37. When it hits 37 the refrigerator clicks on and it brings it down. Now I have tested this with water containers inside of it and it keeps the water at exactly 33 degrees. I mean it, it does work. These refrigerators are not freezers in the sense that you would think of them. They put out a little bit of cold and you can't like stick a half a gallon of water in here and expect it to be frozen the next day. It would take several days to freeze a half gallon of water inside of this thing. Uh, ice cubes, etc. It just doesn't put out the heavy duty cold like your home refrigerator, but it does the job and you have to know what that what it can do and you can live with that. I hope this helps in your refrigerator choice because it's great. I just love, I'm not going back to a cooler. I could. If I have to go back to a cooler, I could and I may depending on the trip. And one other thing, since this refrigerator comes out, should it fail on the road, I could take it out and put it in a cooler. Um, if I need a replacement, I can call up Amazon and get another one shipped. Uh, so that's a one factor to consider. You know, if I'm going with no refrigeration, no cooler, no refrigerator, I can haul this out <coughs> and just fill this huge cavernous space up with dry goods and uh, I could uh, have food in here for <laughs> couple of months probably. So just some considerations. I don't have the answer for you. You have to decide what's best for you. They're just considerations you may want to factor in. This whole system integrates perfectly for camping, for power outages, and, uh, and other occasions. Portable refrigeration, portable lighting, portable audio. It just, uh, it just all makes sense to me. I just love playing with it.